The world is changing. In 2030, you will share it with 8.6 billion people. Most likely, you will live in a city. Digitalization will continue to transform and revolutionize the way you live. Your community will be more global than ever, sharing dreams, ideas, and challenges. Scarce resources and the threat of climate change call for immediate action. Poor air quality, noise, and congestion are forcing us to rethink. The world is changing. Imagine what world you want to live in and what you want to hand over to future generations. Because together, we can shape the world. Welcome everyone to this Volvo Group Live. It's a series of online events where we will share with you the knowledge of our own experts on topics that matter. Thank you for joining us today. I am Pia Magnusson. I work as a communicator at Volvo Group's R&D organization and I will be your moderator today. Today we will talk about the impact of noise in our surroundings. We will also talk about how will our future cities sound like. If you know someone who might be interested in this topic, please tag that person in the comment section and they will receive a notification. We will have a presentation for approximately 30 minutes. Somewhere in the middle, we will have a short Q&A. And also in the end, we will continue to answer questions from you. Since there are many of you joining today, we will try to keep a presentation at a level making it interesting to all of you. To get in the mood and start reflecting on today's topic, I would like to ask you a question. What is the most pleasant sound according to you? Please write your answer in the comments field. When walking down a city street, have you ever thought about the noise and sound from vehicles? When heavy vehicles such as trucks and buses are being developed, where sound and noise levels are very thoroughly being tested before they are put on the street. And when vehicles become electric, new challenges arise when it comes to sound. I stand today in the Volvo Group Acoustic Lab in Lundby, Gothenburg, and I will talk to two of our sound experts, Janos Terskeny and Theresia Mams. First, we will meet Janos. He's a sound and vibration specialist. So, hi, Janos. Hello. Hello. So, this is an impressive room. <coughs> yes, it is. Uh, this is one of the chambers, acoustic chambers, that we mm -hmm. at Volvo Group use for optimizing the sound experience of our products, whether if it's a bus, a truck, or, uh, or a machine. Um, sound is very important for how you experience a vehicle. And uh, it's important for us to give the, the driver, the passenger and the society a good sound experience. And uh, in this facility, we can perform measurement both on the interior and the exterior of a vehicle um, under normal operating conditions, very much mm. like on a real test track. Mm, that's really interesting. And I think sound is not what most people have in their mind when they think about how we develop tracks. So, uh, it will be an interesting session, I hope, for you. And I'm really interested in seeing what you wrote here about what's your favorite sound. Okay, some people say birds. It's also my, one of my favorites, I would say. Uh, another one says diesel engine sound. That's interesting. <laughs> so keep writing. And remember, during this session, you can write your questions in the comment section and we will try to answer as many as we can. So we will try to keep it interactive. So Janus, 
I really love this room. Can, can you tell me more about it? Yes, uh, this is a so-called semi-anechoic chamber, uh, meaning that the only reflective surface that is allowed in this room is the floor. All other surfaces are sound absorbing. Um, uh, in a room like this, we, uh, we perform uh, measurements on, on the vehicle, uh, and this is actually one of the biggest uh, sound um, uh, semionic chambers in Europe. Mm -hmm. And a lot of effort has been put into this room to shield, off, uh, shield it off from the noises from the outside. So this room is actually a room within a room, and uh, it is, as far as possible, physically insulated from the rest of the world. So we make it, so it's very, very quiet in here. Mm -hmm. So, so what are the things we see on the walls here? Yes, those are sound absorbing wedges. Uh, as I said, uh, as this is a semi anechoic chamber, the walls need to be uh, sound absorbing. And um, the, to achieve that, we have wedges on the wall and also uh, to reduce resonances, meaning that we want to reduce the influence of the room on, the, on our measurement results. The room walls are non-parallel to each other and the roof is non-parallel to the floor so that we can focus on the noise from the measured uh, object. Mm -hmm. So is this a wedge we see here? Yes, that is one of the wedges um, mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, I can just step yeah. here. Uh, it is, it's approximately one meter long. Um, it is, for those of you who has not been in a room like this before, I can just mention that this wedge is quite big. It's actually quite huge. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is so big because of the size of the room and also the wide frequency range that we are interested in when we do the measurements. This is made out of uh, mineral wool and it's clad with a uh, fiber cladding. It's mainly to protect it from us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what is your background when you work as a sound and vibration engineer? Um, I have a master's degree in mechanical engineering. Um, everybody working in the sound lab has a master's degree or a PhD in engineering. And uh, I have been working with acoustics for about 20 years now. And from my experience, acoustics is almost like an art. It's a combination of science, theory, long experience. And you have to have this sixth sense of how to combine all these together to achieve your goal, whether if it's to make something quieter or just mm -hmm. make it sound right. Mm -hmm. so let's start a little bit from the beginning. Why is sound and noise important for us as human beings? Uh, yes, uh, hearing is very important for us human beings. Uh, we use our hearing for multiple purposes. We use our hearing for... Uh, um, uh, you know, communications, as we're doing now. We use our hearing for uh, relaxation when you listen to music or the ocean. You, you, we use our hearing for um, safety purposes as well, uh, quite a lot for that, when we listen to alarms or warning sounds. Uh, for example, when you're out walking, uh, you're using your hearing to monitor your environment, to have a feeling of that if there's a vehicle approaching from behind, or a bicycle, or even another person. Mm -hmm. um, we are Stone Age people in a modern world. Um, human evolution is much, has been, is much slower than technical evolution, and we are not really designed to live in a noisy environment that we live in many of us today. Uh, let me give you an example of this Stone Age functionality. Um, while, uh, studies show that while you are sleeping, your brain is monitoring your environment with your hearing. Uh, it listens for, uh, for a tiger or perhaps an approaching lion. And if it detects something that is suspicious, it will wake you up and it might trigger your fight or flight instinct. I think just a practical example so you, you feel where we are. I mean, Many of us, uh, I think, has been sometimes uh, in their lives in the situation where you wake up in the middle of the night, you're standing there in the dark and your pulse is pumping and you heard something, but you're not really sure what you heard. And you're standing there waiting for that sound to happen again so you consciously can take a decision whether you should run or whether you should fight. Um, this seems like a very neat functionality, of course, but it has its downside. As I said, we are not designed for living in a noisy environment that we are living in today. And uh, noise actually stresses us. Mm -hmm. The studies show that uh, exposure to high noise levels will increase the stress hormones in your body. And increased stress hormones could increase your blood pressure. 
and an increased blood pressure could over time lead to cardiovascular diseases. So a noisy environment is an unhealthy environment. Mm. Do only humans react to noise in this way? How, how is it with animals? Um, animals react in a similar way, both when it comes to their health and the stress hormone uh, part, but also when it comes to mating and survival. Uh, for instance, just to give an example, um, a male bird sings to attract a female bird. If the female bird cannot hear the male bird, uh, they will not find each other. And if they cannot find each other, there will be no baby birds, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, if a, a bird is, uh, if a bird cannot hear another bird's warning sound, uh, or if it cannot hear an approaching predator, it might end up at somebody's lunch. Mm, that's very interesting. And you know, this room can be really silent. Mm -hmm. Not when we are talking, of mm -hmm. course, but. Can you describe to our audience, how could that complete silence be like? Yes, um, let me try to describe it. Um, imagine yourself standing on a paved road in the middle of nowhere. There is nothing around you. There are no buildings, uh, no trees, and no crickets playing. It's in the middle of the night and it's, there's no wind. It's absolutely calm, absolute silence. That is what it's like in this room. Uh, the silence is almost deafening in this room when you get it, go in here. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's really a good description, deafening silence. Uh, I think we have got some questions. Yes. So I think we can try and answer some of them now. Yes. So we have first one here. Um, what is low frequency noise? Does it have potential to cause discomfort to passengers? If so, then how could it possibly be remedied? Yes. Low frequent noise, we normally say that no frequent, low frequent noise is between 20 to up to around 200 hertz. Uh, yes, it can cause discomfort, it can. And uh, to remedy it, it's, it is possible, but it's more difficult than remedy high frequent noise. Mm -hmm. So here is another question. Yes. Uh, what is the cut of frequency of this room? Hey, you know that, that? <laughs> nah, that is something I unfortunately cannot tell you. Okay. Uh, due to confidentiality uh -huh. reasons. Okay, I understand. <laughs> yes. So, uh, getting another question here. Um, okay. So, uh, I think we will we will come back to the questions later. But please Fine. write your questions in the comments. So we would really love to to get a lot of questions. So. Thank you for those so far. And we will continue with the Q&A at the end of the session. And uh, you will also get back yes. a little bit later, Jonas. Okay. So we will now talk more about how we work with sound and vibration to create the perfect sound experience. And I say welcome to Theresia. She's a sound and vibration uh, engineer, and she's got an electrical uh, master's, deg master's degree in electrical engineering. And I know she has 20 years of experience within this area. So hi, Theresia. Hello, Pia. Hi, everyone. Hi. What will you talk about? Today? I will explain a bit more how the team works with the testing of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. So, but before we go into that, uh, you know, I asked the audience about what was their most pleasant sound? Do you have a favorite sound, Theresia? Well, what we perceive as a pleasant sound is very individual. It depends on age, uh, culture and experiences. Uh, I don't have just one favorite sound. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually like several. Uh, but I can mention I really uh, I can appreciate the sound quality when, for instance, closing a well-designed vehicle door because I know all the work behind it. Mm -hmm. So can you explain how you work uh, with sound and what you do here in the acoustic lab? Yes, uh, as Jonas explained, we measure interior and exterior sound in this lab. And the benefit with this large room is that we can bring the whole truck or bus indoors and not be dependent on the weather situation outdoors or temperature changes. So we can have very stable running conditions with high accuracy and repeatability. Mm -hmm. and as you see today, we have an electric Volvo truck in here. Mm, it's beautiful. Uh, and we will get back to that a little bit later, the, the interesting combination of electric vehicles and sound. So what is your goal when you work with interior and exterior sound? Is it, what is it you want to achieve? 
Well, we measure interior sound with the goal to create a safe and relaxing working and a resting environment for both driver and the passenger with a premium sound quality. And there are also legal regulations that all automotive manufacturers must fulfill, which means, for instance, that the sound level from the vehicle, it must be below a certain uh, level in decibels or reach a minimum level when it comes to, for instance, electric vehicles, which are very quiet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also want to have a low exterior sound level for the people working around the track mm -hmm. and for society in general. Mm -hmm. And another benefit with this large room is that we, we can bring the whole track indoors and we can simulate the real driving situations in a very good way. So that means we can have the track running on these rollers, but standing still. And all the microphones you see behind me here are measuring one at a time, simulating the vehicle passing by. So, so you're simulating the outdoor environment very realistically. So when do you come into the picture when, when Volvo develops a new truck or a bus? We are involved uh, from the very early stages in the development and mm. throughout the whole development cycle of the product. Mm. So can you explain the measurement process a little bit more in detail? Yes, absolutely. Mm. Uh, we start in the preparation room, which is next to where we are right now. And that is where the vehicle is prepared for testing. So we install measurement equipment, different kinds of transducers that we need, and any required uh, minor to medium uh, modification of the vehicle for the test. And mm -hmm. for instance, also change tires uh, of, the, of the vehicle. And after that, the, the vehicle is ready to enter the acoustic chamber for testing. And when we perform sound and vibration measurements, uh, a setup can consist of only a few sensors to over 100. So you have to be very thorough in order to get uh, the equipment and all the sensors correctly installed. Mm -hmm. Let me show you on the electric truck here. Yes, please. So here you can see part of a measurement setup. We have microphones measuring the exterior sound, the radiated sound. We also have microphones in, in the cab. And we have accelerometers mounted here on the vehicle. And they are measuring the vibration of the structure. So with the data collected from these sensors and many more of the vehicle, we can perform many uh, deep analysis and they give us very valuable information about the sound and vibration status of the vehicle at this time in the development phase. Mm -hmm. so, so you measure using the sensors on the truck, but how do you know which part of a truck is making noise? Well, there are several ways of locating a sound source. It depends on, for instance, if it's structure-borne or airborne. If you're close to the source in near field or if you're in far, at the far field, and we particularly analyze the frequency content because that gives us a lot of information. So just let me give you an example. Mm. Uh, a rotating component, for instance, a fan on the vehicle, it will create a sound at a specific frequency. And that correlates to an order depending on the rotational speed and the number of uh, fan blades in this case. It can be a number of twos on a gear. Uh, and with that information, we can uh, analyze and see what rotating component is contributing to the to the sound. Mm -hmm. So let me show you on the computer here. Mm -hmm. uh, here you can see some different spectrums of uh, measured data and in the top left plot you can see a bright red line. Uh, it's a horizontal white line in the black and white version and that tells us that it is a rotating component with high energy. And by analyzing what exact order it is, we can correlate with the data we have, we have knowledge of our components. Uh, so we correlate uh, what exact uh, component is rotating at that speed and can take action to improve it. And in a similar way, uh, the lower left plot gives us two key informations. You can see in the middle, there is a broad yellow area that is a resonance, which means that the structure is uh, easily excited by energy. And you see this diagonal red line. Uh, it's again a rotating component with higher energy. So, uh, and at a certain speed, this, uh, the energy from this rotating component will excite the resonance, making the structure uh, vibrate and causing noise. So with this information, we can be proactive and reduce the energy from the source, from the component, 
or we can modify the structure and, and uh, make it better. So uh, this is, as you see, we can measure with different sensors mm -hmm. and perform uh, many different uh, test runs, or we can take a picture of the sound with an acoustic camera. So acoustic camera, that sounds really interesting. Yes, what is that? Yeah. Let me show you here. Yeah. This is an acoustic camera. Mm. Uh, it's an array of many microphones. And as you can see here on this one, it's a solid sphere. Uh, there are 54 microphones on this one uh, mounted on the surface of uh, the globe here. And uh, they can be an open sphere, like an open grid, uh, or a 2D uh, flat surface grid also. So uh, let me ju uh, just explain in a very simple way how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, I said there are many, many, uh, many microphones and uh, the distance and the number of microphones are of importance. And uh, when we use it, we start by taking a picture or scanning the area we want to measure. So it can be uh, the track or part of the track, like the interior of the cab. And that's particularly where we use this one. Uh, and after that, we mount this microphone sphere in the same uh, position as the laser scanner was and perform measurement. Mm -hmm. And based on the sound pressure level measured by all these different microphones, the system will uh, perform several deep calculations. And the result is a picture of the sound contribution in the cab. Again, let me show you on the computer. Mm -hmm. Here you can see uh, the scanned interior of the cab, and it's a scanning of a large volume, which is unwrapped and presented as a 2D picture. So to the left, you can see the driver's seat and the steering wheel. In the middle, you have the front uh, windscreen, and to the right, you can see the passenger seat. And in the left picture here, you can see that the system divides, divides this large scan surface into much uh, smaller areas uh, so it creates a grid or, or a mesh which is used in the calculation of the sound contribution and to the right you can see the microphone sphere mounted inside the cab ready for measurement and the first result we get it's uh, uh, average spectrum of all the microphones we can also if you want to look into each individual microphone and, and the result the response measured. As the frequency spectrum is very wide and um, consists of uh, all no uh, sounds or noises, we want to find hotspots that we want to uh, investigate more. So we particularly want to uh, divide the frequency range into smaller parts and analyze only that. So as you can see on the screen, there is a, a peak, then a sound increase marked in the box. So we tell the system to zoom in on only that portion and perform a calculation in that frequency band. And the result is, as you can see on the picture here, that um, it's showing in color what part of the interior is uh, contributing to this sound. So with this information, we can take quick action and know what area we need to improve and, and um, work on next step. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Teresa. This is really Thank super you. interesting. And you will get back later for a Q&A session. Yes. So now when we see more and more electric vehicles on our roads, uh, passenger cars, but also trucks and buses, how does that go with sound? Since electric vehicles, they are so quiet. And I hope Janos will be able to tell me more. So Janos, can you please explain about this? Yes, uh, but first let me give you <clears throat> Uh, the big picture here. Uh, the Volvo Group now develops electrical uh, products and vehicles within all of our segments, uh, buses, trucks, uh, construction equipment, and also Volvo Penta products. I mean, Volvo Buses alone has already sold 6,500 electric buses worldwide. And we have the goal that all of our products should be fossil fuel free by 2040. We have a focus to make road transport solutions uh, sustainable uh, so it's a it's a huge journey it's a it's a fantastic journey and we are all proud to be part of it yes me too so what does it mean to have silent electric vehicles on our roads what does it that do to how is that good for the drivers and society uh, 
uh, we create vehicles that are safe and comfortable for the driver. Uh, for the driver of an electric bus or truck, uh, the silent, uh, the less noise and less vibration in the cab means a more relaxed, more uh, comfortable working environment. Mm. So I think we have a short video clip to show from one of our drivers, Henrik. So let me share it with you. I uh, deliver groceries to Coop stores in Gothenburg and uh, today I have uh, five deliveries. I feel a lot more calm when I drive this truck. There's no noise that like disturbance, there's no vibrations and uh, I feel better after a day's work. At the end of the day you're so refreshed and uh, relaxed, you have no noise from the engine and you have no vibrations. Just try it and uh, you don't want to go back. I can promise you that. So that, that is really a strong statement from Henrik. You can, you can really see that he's very, very pleased with driving an electric truck. Yes, uh, less uh, noise and less vibration in the cab is a huge difference for the driver. But we shouldn't forget that it's also a huge difference for the society. Uh, not just because of the natural fact that they are more quiet and it's a more pleasant and more comfortable environment in our cities, but also the fact that it opens, the electric vehicles opens the door for new possibilities. An electric truck opens the possibility for distributing goods at night, uh, which in turn could mean that there will be less traffic on the roads and less congestions during the day. Mm. So there are many benefits with uh, electric trucks being very silent, but can we be too silent? Um, uh, safety is one of Volvo's core values. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we put a lot of effort into this uh, area. Um, uh, our electric products, vehicles, are all uh, designed to be safe for whomever comes in contact with them. But we always aim higher. And in the future, we will add an artificial sound to our vehicles to increase safety even more. Okay, that's exciting. Can, can we listen to that added sound today? Uh, unfortunately not yet, it's still confidential. Okay, too bad. We will have to wait then for, for that. But is it not a bit strange that you create very silent vehicles and then we add on sound to make them less quiet? Yes, it might seem strange, but I think most of us can recognize ourselves in the situation, nowadays at least, that when you walk in a car uh, parking lot, for instance, and an electric vehicle almost sneaks up on you and you have this strange feeling, should I have known that it was there, a little bit uncomfortable about not having control over our situation. Um, but I believe that we can create a sound which is alarming and alerting for people, uh, vulnerable road users like pedestrians and cyclists, but one which minimizes disturbance for people living in building nearby. Mm. So are all electric vehicles quiet by default or does this differ? Uh, well, not all electric vehicles are quiet by default. They do have the potential to be very quiet, but it takes hard and dedicated and focused work to get there. Mm. So we see an increasing urbanization in the world with more and more people living in cities. Mm -hmm. And I heard that by 2050, it's estimated that two thirds of the population will live in cities. Do you, has the awareness of how noise and sound affect us? Do you, you think that has grown? Yes, it definitely has grown. Um, the World Health Organization has carried out studies which shows that noise pollution is a major problem in our cities. Uh, they uh, have done studies which shows that 1.6 million healthy life years are lost in the Western European countries alone each year. Um, and the pan-European survey shows that 49% of the residents in our cities feel disturbed by noise. Mm, that is a lot. Yes, it is a lot. And a lot of cities today are trying to find solutions to solve the noise pollution problem. Uh, our electric trucks and our uh, electric vehicles will help them to achieve their goals and to make, uh, to improve the quality of life of millions of people in our cities. Mm. Thank you, Jonas. That was really interesting. And if you who are watching are interested in knowing more about how Volvo Group transforms into sustainable transportation, please go to our website and go to the section 
future of transportation. Now I'm very eager to see if we have got <laughs> more questions. So welcome back to Asia as well. Thank you. So now we have got some plenty of questions. Let me take some here. So I think first we have uh, we have got a lot of questions about cancelling sound or customizing interior sound. So do you have an answer on that? Uh, how are we doing that? Yes, uh, it yes. is possible to cancel and to add sound if you like uh, for the, the interior sound. Mm -hmm. um, with the electric vehicles, the exterior sound will be very low at uh, low speeds. And as Jonas explained, that is where we add sound uh, at uh, up to a certain level or speed. Yeah. Uh, and here's another question. Uh, what kind of noise would you like to keep for electric vehicles? Maybe Janos. You have uh, the answer. kind of noises we want to keep for electric mm -hmm. vehicles. We want to keep the ones that are communicating sounds, meaning that the driver should have a feeling of what is happening and also for people around the vehicle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also see a question here about this wedge and do you know what is the weight of, of one of the wedges? <laughs> do you know that? Anyway, let me look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know, but, but, but it's not that heavy. Yeah, it's, no, it's quite so light. Yeah, no. try it. Uh, a few a couple kilos, of, maybe? Yeah, perhaps a couple yeah, of kilos, yeah. yes. Okay. It's an interesting question. I never yeah, thought about yeah, Maybe we have to, to weigh it afterwards so we can know. Um, so I have another question here. It's... Um, a bit technical. I think it's uh, uh, maybe you can answer it, Teresa. Yeah, and it's about what challenges challenges will be seen in terms of internal noise management, as now most of the vehicles have moved from the combustion engine to to electric vehicle engines, and uh, causing internal noise. Uh, so yes, uh, shall, maybe it's a bit long question, but yeah. Yeah, I think I understand yeah. what yeah. they uh, want to know. Uh, yes, with when we now have more electric vehicles, uh, the masking uh, or background sound from the combustion engine will be gone. So a lot of noises or mm -hmm. sound sources which have been there all along will be more audible uh, mm -hmm. with the quiet uh, sound from the electric vehicle. Uh, so that is why sound quality is in high focus and then we put a lot of effort into it. Mm -hmm. And as I explained also uh, in the test setup, uh, that, that is one of the uh, sound or contributions that we uh, are working a lot with and the localization uh, of the sources. Mm -hmm. So another question, how can we predict the acoustic turbulence created on the vehicle? And what is the damage that this transition can create? You know, I'm not fully the turb the turbulence. Predict uh, it, the turbulence and and what it uh, will, uh, what damage it will do. Maybe ah, it's a bit. Uh, I, think I guess it's aerodynamic. Yeah, it's aerodynamic. Or, uh, uh, yes. uh, uh, we do a lot of different studies to to predict those. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay. How does the tire noise add to track noise? Yeah, because you talked about the tires and you change tires and things mm. when you test. So, mm. uh, well, in in here, yeah. it's uh, we we change the tires because it will otherwise uh, you can have squeaking sound and so on. So we mm. want to have we focus on uh, not the tire noise in when we do the testing in here, and we know the tire noise contribution because we have measured also at our test track. So we know that contrib contribution part of it. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. So, how do you add a truck inside this room? How do we add it? Yeah, how, how do we, does how it get, get in, it in here? here? <laughs> so, <laughs> we have big doors in the back. You don't yeah. see them right now, but they are behind the trucks. So we drive it in. Mm. We drive the truck into the room. Yeah, it's the, the doors are really hidden in here. So, so yeah, mm. it's uh, it, there are wedges also on the doors. So yeah. It's not easy yes. to see no, them. No. So here's an interesting question. How is good sound defined? Are you working together with psychology? Uh, we, yes, in a sense we do. Uh, mm. We are interested in that topic and we review it quite a lot. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, a communicative sound is connected to um, psychoacoustics as we have said. Yeah. Mm. 
So here's another question about noise cancellation. Um, is it possible to introduce noise, noise cancellation in the driver cabin environment, you know, similar to what we have on headphones? You can have these headphones that really takes away the uh, sound. Mm -hmm. uh, can yeah. we do that? Uh, you, yes, yeah? uh, uh, there is a, a possibility, and he has, uh, so there is a possibility to do that. Yes, it is mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult, though. Okay. And uh, but it is possible. Mm -hmm. And you, yeah, and costly. So it's uh, yeah. you have to be also prepared to pay for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Maybe it's easier to put on the headphones then. <laughs> <laughs> so, how to ensure pedestrian security with electric vehicles that we could not hear coming? So, Janos, you talked a little bit about that before. Um, you yes. Talk, yeah. Uh, how to ensure that, that, that mm -hmm. uh, the sound is safe? Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, pedestrians, so they are safe uh, when it comes to an electric vehicle. Um, well, there are certain regulations connected to that as mm -hmm. well that we need to follow. And the regulations are developed to... Uh, to ensure the safety, but on top of that, we add our own uh, tweaks and and mm. so on, which we will communicate uh, in time. You yeah. uh, how we have thought about that. Yes, yeah. yeah, so at the mm. moment, I cannot share that information. No. So, what are the various measurement activities carried out in the lab? Uh, what is the area of the room? So, sort of two questions. We. We perform um, both, as I said, uh, running conditions where we have the track running and the rollers are ro uh, uh, yeah, working. Uh, but we also perform measurements um, when it's standing still and focusing more on components and systems. So we do uh, a lot of different uh, testing in here. Mm -hmm. So, how do you consider the reflections and the sound cancellation or addition is being calculated from the simulations? I don't know if I understood that question myself, but... Mm, uh, neither am I. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> understood. So, Could you repeat bit, how yeah, we correlate it's it? Like or? how it's being calculated from the simulations. Uh, maybe we should no. take another one. Um, no, I don't really fully understand that. No. Uh, how do you measure wind noise? We do measure wind noise in yeah. different ways uh -huh. uh, on test track and in facilities mm. uh, for that type of mm. measurements. Yes. So it's not done in here? Or... Um, smaller scale, yes. Uh, okay. And here is another question. Since it's a quiet room, I'm curious, how do you simulate the environment to measure external noise? Hmm. Uh, there are yeah. multiple ways to do that. Yeah. Uh, normally, that is not that. Uh, the difficult is actually to get it quiet. It's more difficult to find a, find a quiet environment than to add uh, noise to it. So, mm. Okay. So... Where do you get inspiration for the electric vehicles, artificial sounds? Is it for normal combustion engine? Maybe it's a bit confidential, but, yes, way. I was, I was already <laughs> but it's a very interesting question. For, for that. It yeah. is still confidential, okay. yes, it so is. We, we will communicate yeah. it. We will have like to that. wait. Yes. So, sorry about that. So, um, I think we are getting uh, that probably was the last question for today so um, thank you everyone for your questions and we now come to an end to this Volvo group live uh, and if you enjoyed today's episode please comment in the comments field and share tag a friend uh, we will get back live next month with a very interesting topic of data analytics and artificial intelligence so so don't miss that you can follow our volvo group on linkedin and you will get notified each time we go live so thank you so much Jonas and Triesia, thank for you. letting thank us you. be here in this lovely room yes. and thank you everyone for watching i wish you a great rest of the day and stay safe bye for now bye